Hello, I uh, created a link, and it's only one page long. Um, I was in deep concentration, and the actual answers um, flowed like water. And uh, I mean that literally. I was uh, using uh, uh, Pythagorean retroduction, including everything I've known over the many years of deep thought on field theory. I created this list to the right, but before we get to that list, which I'd like to read, and the link is below for this list, I'd like to uh, read something from Newton. Um, descriptions are not explanations. I actually have a lot of respect for Newton, but I'd like to read a couple passages from Newton. Um, importantly, before reading those passages in the Latin, we would uh, state from Newton, hypothesis non fingo. He means I feign no uh, understanding or no hypothesis, and this is regarding gravity. Let me quote Newton for you. I have not as yet been able to discover the reason for these properties of gravity from phenomena, and I do not feign a hypothesis. It means he has no idea what gravity is. I appreciate that of Newton. That's actually a statement of wisdom. Um, today's scientists uh, feign understanding, but they have no understanding at all. They give you equations and uh, descriptions, and they're accurate equations, they're accurate descriptions, but they're not explanations. Descriptions are not explanations. Uh, for whatever is not deduced from phenomena must be called hypothesis, and hypotheses, whether metaphysical or physical, or based on occult qualities, or mechanical, have no place in experimental philosophy. In this philosophy in particular, propositions are inferred from the phenomenon afterwards, rendered general by induction. It is inconceivable that inanimate matter should, without a mediation of something else, which is not material, He's talking about the medium of gravity. Operate upon and affect other matter without mutual contact. Gravity should be innate, inherent, and essential to matter so that one body may act upon another at a distance through a vacuum without the mediation of anything else by and through which their uh, action uh, and course may be conveyed from one to another. It is to me so great an absurdity that I believe no man who has and Philosophical matters, a competent faculty of thinking, can ever fall for it or into it. Gravity must be caused by an agent acting constantly according to certain laws. But whether this agent be material or immaterial, I have left to the consideration of my readers. Sir Isaac Newton, letter to Bentley, 1692. In summation, Isaac Newton is telling you, even though uh, we still use equation today, that he has no idea what the medium of gravity is. Okay. And it is a medium. It is not warp space-time. So I like to give you my 10-point definition of gravity, and I stand by this completely. And it did flow like water. I've given great consideration to a lot of things in field theory. Number one, uh, this is copyright by me, but feel, feel free to download it and use it however you want. All of this is original to me. Gravity is not a force, rather the acceleration of the homeostasis of highest inertia, or lowest ether torsion. The phenomena called gravity is the reaction of the ether, the medium, to the ultra-high energy light dynamos, simple, simplex or accumulated, um, corresponding to what is conventionally called matter. Number two, gravity is an anti-field, but incorrectly assumed a field due to the acceleration and mutual mass interactions and observations of same. A field, by definition, is an ether perturbation modality, the dielectric being the ether under stress or torsion, the magnetic being the dielectric under the state of loss of energy or inertia to the medium or field systems as manifesting the fundamental centrifugal toroidal vector of expanding magnitude and its corresponding attributes, such as space, time, mass, etc., Number three, matter and masses do not accelerate towards one another. Gravity is not a property of either matter or the masses composed of matter. All matter, be it simplex or compounded, meaning like two atoms versus two giant bodies or masses, is ultra-high energy light, and as such, ultra-high energy light is dielectric dynamos that necessitatively induce current in the ether or medium as such. We can say the medium, we can say the ether, it doesn't make any difference to me. This induction circuit inherent to the nature of matter generates the attributional impulse current of the ether and movement of matter, or the phenomena that we call gravity. Number four, all light rebounds in its coaxial circuit, manifesting and demanifesting as the perturbation propagates itself in its own medium, the ether, as such. 
matter as such being ultra high energy light mutually accelerates towards the lowest null pressure in counter space just as the emr i.e electromagnetic radiation i.e light circuit of light rebounds in its cycle or frequency at the force dissipation of magnetodielectric geometry as light circuit is cycled and exhausted as such over and over again as of course meaning the frequency of the circuit field compound phenomena that we call EMR or conventionally light. Matter being ultra high energy light as such rebounds mutually towards counter space due to its generation of an impulse current in the ether and its resultant strain phenomena or torsion as such. This can be conventionally called the induction towards inertia homostasis. Number five, the phenomenon called gravity is neither the warping of space and impossible likewise deemed so by Nikola Tesla, or the curvature of space and or time. This illogical absurdity was birthed by atomists and relativists as a necessary resultant to create a new medium after the, the uh, dismissal of the natural order of the only actual medium of nature, i.e. natura naturans, that being the ether. Number six, the phenomena called gravity is entirely identical to the phenomena incorrectly called magnetic attraction and likewise identical to the phenomena deemed electrostatic cling. These phenomena are only individuated in and by lesser minds, resultant to these having attributional nuances of being either point source, as in the case of a magnet, or non-point source, i.e. incoherent induction to the ether inertia homostasis, as in the case of conventional matters, mutual acceleration. Number seven, charge disparity in the case of static cling is a spatial disparity of charge polarization. Likewise, too, mutual magnet acceleration, incorrectly called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism whatsoever, is a spatial disparity of charge polarization of the ether impulse current torsion, in that case being point source polarization and therefore a compound multiplicative order of power over that of static cling and the phenomena called gravity, relational to conventional matter. Number eight, just as lightning is not a ground to cloud or cloud to ground energy phenomena, rather a lateral discharge into counter space, so too the phenomena called gravity is the impulse current of the ether by simplex or compounded matter. These ultra high energy dielectric dynamos and their motions, i.e., motions towards antispatial, towards counter space that are induced and impelled by the ether. This movement of matter is not mutually induced by the matter itself rather by the ether, the medium's induction towards inertia homeostasis. The impulse current between matter is the property of the ether, the medium, not the matter itself, which explains away all confusions on and about the phenomena that we call gravity. These ultra-high energy dynamos being ultra-high energy light as such create the impulse current of the ether in response to the mutual acceleration towards counter space. This phenomenon I call gravity is the acceleration erasure of the curvilinear or toroidal torsion of any and all magnetic effects of inertia refraction which, of course, magnetism is by definition. This fact was proven by Oliver Heaviside as to the role of magnetism in the phenomena that we call gravity in his obscure article, A Gravitational and Electromagnetic Analogy. I don't know if you know who Oliver Heaviside was, but he's one of the five gods or prophets of electrical theory, including Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, uh, Maxwell. Number 10, lastly so. It has been said that nature abhors a vacuum. Rather correctly, it should be said that nature abhors ether inertia refraction, which generates the magnetotoroidal disparity and resultant impulse current, which drives the mutual masses towards counter space and inertial homostasis. The final resultant of gravity is the zero sum gain in the homeostasis of inertia ether potential, increasing said potential to a net zero anti vector, i.e., inertia stasis, or total ether torsion null as meant a total absence, of course, of force in motion. Anyway, the link for this uh, one simple page, and it is simple to me. I mean, uh, don't accuse me of using big words. These are not big words to me. I think like this and uh, all the time. And not only that, I kept this simple. If you think this is complex, it, I don't know, you might think this one page is complex. To me, it is very simplex. I've actually kept it really quite simple. Um, it's 10 points. It's only one page. I've not uh, complicated things. I've kept it simple. And, uh, to me, these are not big words. I, sometimes people will say, oh, you're using big words. I, to me, these are not big words at all. I mean, if you think they're big words, then your vocabulary might be a little too small. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's not heavy. Maybe it's moderately heavy. But I mean, that depends on where you're at. And, uh, you know, 
every field of study has its own uh, vernacular, its own lexicon that is specific to that area of study. So, anyway, once again, you know, the equation that we use for navigation inside, I mean, outside of the Earth for satellites, or, you know, Newton's equation. Yeah, Newton outright says he has no idea, and it is a bold statement that I commend him for. Because it's far better to say I don't know than to you know to lie to everybody to impress them as modern day science. Oh yes, I know what it is, like Feynman did and these other uh, so-called scientists today. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton flat out told you, I have no idea what gravity is. I have no idea what this medium is between masses. You know, I, I figured out their motion with this equation, but I have no idea what magnet. I mean, what gravity is. This is what gravity is. I stand behind this. You can attack me for it all you want, but that is what gravity is. And it explains away the misunderstandings of gravity. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And uh, if you like this uh, video, um, there's always a donation link below. Or you can tell me how much you hate it. Thank you so much.